Good day and thank you for joining us. In today's lesson we'll be looking at algebraic expressions. So this is a bit of a revision. Um, what we will be looking at is the different aspects of algebraic expressions and how they can ask you questions surrounding the different characteristics of these expressions. Okay. So as you can see here on this first slide what we've got here is sort of a table set up where they've given us the algebraic expression and what they're asking us for is the number of terms in each expression and the name of the expression, okay? So, without further ado, let's get into this first example. So, you can see here in the first one, it says 4a squared b. So, they're asking first, what, how many terms are in this first expression? We can see that this is just one single term. Remember now, when we're looking at the number of terms in expression terms are separated specifically by a positive and a negative so addition and subtraction okay there's no addition and subtraction in here so that would mean there's just one term okay and the name of the expression that we'll look at the number of terms in expression when we have an expression with one term our expression is called a monomial okay mono meaning one okay so we call it a monomial looking at the next expression here we have 2xy minus 3x so we can see that this is uh, that there is a minus sign in between the two so we have two terms in this expression and what we call that is a binomial by for two okay then we look at the next one over here so there is an exception to the rule with the addition and subtraction and that is that if we have two terms inside a bracket they will count as a single term okay so this 5x plus 2y that will be a single term because it is in brackets and this is obviously a separate term with the negative sign over there so in this term we have two t in this expression we have two terms once again and we know that is called a binomial okay then looking over here we can see that our three terms here on the top are in fact separated by a positive and a negative but this is another exception to that rule in the fact that if it is all in one fraction we count the fraction as the term okay so this all here is one term because it's all over one number in a single fraction okay so this is all one term and we call that a monomial okay and then this final example throws basically all of it into one year we can see we have our brackets of course so this brackets is being times by this number of years so there's no additional subtraction in between so this whole section over here is going to count as one term okay that's one term then we look further on, we have another term over there, it's plus 4a. Then if you can remember, this is a fraction over here, so that counts as one term. The whole fraction is a term. We have our other term over there, and our last term over here. So if it makes it easier with these bigger expressions, breaking it up either by color coding it or putting a specific shape underneath each term to help you differentiate, we can tell that there are one, two, three, four, five terms. Okay. So there are five terms in these expressions. When we exceed or equal four terms, okay. So we can go monomial, binomial, trinomial for three terms in expression. But once we get to four and above, we just end up calling those polynomials. Poly for multiple, okay. Sorry, not the S. It's just a polynomial, okay? So, that's just basically how we would um, find out how many terms are in an expression and then how we would name that expression, okay? So, we have monomial, binomial, trinomial if there are three terms, which we didn't get in this example. And if there are more than four or more terms, that is a polynomial. So now moving on to the next example over here, we can see that we are given 
this nice expression here at the top. It's given as 4x minus 3x to the power of 4 plus 5x squared minus x to the power of 3 over 2 plus 6. So we have these many questions here set down below and in most of your papers you will see that this is usually your question 2 or your question 3. So there are a lot of marks to be made here and also a lot to be lost if you do not understand the different characteristics of your expressions. So we're going to walk through these examples and how you would go about answering these sort of questions. So in the first one, they ask us how many terms are in the expression. So we already know how to identify what the terms are separated by a positive and a negative. Remember, fractions and brackets, they will count as one term. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are 5 terms, okay? And that's your answer for that question, straight up. That is your answer, and that will get you a mark already. Then they're asking, determine the degree of the expression. Now, what is the degree of the expression? That is going to be your highest valued exponent, okay? So your highest valued exponent. So what are our exponents? These are our powers over here okay and our highest valued exponent is 4 okay because to the power of 4 that is the highest exponent we have so we will write in our answer as just 4 okay so that is the degree of the expression that is the highest exponent just keep that in mind now let's look at yeah write down the coefficient of the fourth term so we're going to count down we have 1 2 3 and this is term number 4 now what we, we know what the coefficient is right the coefficient is the number in front of the x okay which is the variable we know the x is the variable and our coefficient is going to be the number in front of it so we're looking at specifically this over here let me just try and break this up for you guys so we can understand it a bit better together so we have here a term x3 over 2 so x to the power 3 over 2 we need to break this up so we can find out what its coefficient is so we know that there is an invisible one in front of this x right and another way of writing our um this term out would be a half x to the power of 3 okay so this is exactly the same as this upper here so these are the two different ways we can write out these fractions that include our variables and our coefficients. And we can see that when we've converted it to this form over here, this one coming from obviously the one that is in front of the x, we can see that we have a coefficient now for our variable. And our coefficient here in this case is that half over there, okay? But we can see also this term is negative, okay? So it is actually, it's my bad I didn't write that in. It's negative x to the power of 3 over 2. So this is negative a half x to the power of 3. So our coefficient in this case we can clearly see is negative a half. Because that is the term in front of our variable. Okay. So that's our coefficient for the fourth term. Moving on to the next question I ask. Write down the power of x in the first term. So our first term is our 4x over here. And let's look at, so we know the power is here in this position over here. And because there's no power given to us, we know that that is the power of 1. Okay. So when there's no power given to us, we know that is to the power of 1. So write down the power of x in the first term. That will be just 1 as our answer. Moving on to question 1.5 here. It says write down the constant term. So the constant term, our constant is just going to be our number that is completely by itself, okay? And we'll always have that in one of these examples. And that would be a number without an x or a power, okay? Or without a variable and a power. And that we can clearly see here is our positive 6. So by writing down the constant term, we just write in 6 as our answer. Now this says write down the term with the highest coefficient. Okay, and we know that coefficient is that number in front of the variable, which is x in this case, right? So our highest coefficient 
So that is going to be our five over here, right? That is our highest coefficient because remember our coefficients fall in front of our variables. Okay, and remember x is a constant. It can't be a coefficient. It does not have a variable attached to it. So that's why we will have five as our highest coefficient in this case. And we just write that ons in as is. But they, but um, this is also a very important thing to note here. They've asked us to write down the term with highest coefficient. So they're not asking us to write down the highest coefficient. So if we're writing down the whole term, it's going to be 5x squared. So that's the sort of ways that they can change up one or two words in the question to try and confuse you, okay? So if they're asking you to write down the highest coefficient, you'd write down 5. But they're asking you to write down the term with highest coefficient. So we'll write 5x squared, okay? Because that is the whole term. Now, in the last question here, they ask us, arrange the expression in descending order of x. So basically, that means is we'll look at the powers, okay? So we'll look at the powers of x. So arrange the expression in descending order of x. So we'll start with highest to lowest. So we'll start with the highest power, which we can clearly see here is, ne is 4, right? So we'll write... There, it's a negative 3x to the power of 4. So we're just writing down the expression in descending powers of x, okay? So we have a negative 3x to the power of 4. Then we have minus 3 to the power of 3. No, sorry. Minus x to the power of 3 over 2. Can you see we're counting down here in powers? We have 4, then we have 3. If you look for 2, that's 5x squared. So we say plus. 5x squared, then if you're looking for 1, that's 4x over here, so that's plus 4x, and then of course our constant's always going to go last if we're going in descending order, because that's basically x to the power of 0, so we're left with plus 6. And just like that, we've finished solving this first example right over here. And now straight after that, we can head over to our next example over here. So here in this expression, we can see that each term has an x and a y value. Well, not each term, most of them do. And that will sort of prove how they're trying to throw a curveball at us. But we don't have to really get confused. We'll just break it up, okay? So once again, they're asking how many terms are in the expression. So we say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are six terms in the expression, right? Then they ask us, write down the coefficient of the fifth term. Remember, coefficient is in front of that variable, which is the letters, okay? So the fifth term, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have y to the power of 5 here. The coefficient is in front. There is an invisible 1 over there. So write down the coefficient of the fifth term is 1, okay? Then it says, write down the power of x in the first term. So here is our first term, right? And we look at the x, the power of x here is 2. So it's x to the power of 2, so we write in. Because they're asking for the power, we'll write in that 2. Then it says, write down the power of y in the fourth term. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4. So the power of y in this term, so this is negative x to the power of 4, y to the power of 1. Okay, so that is the power of y in the fourth term. Then it says, arrange the expression in descending orders of x. Okay, so even though we have y there, we're just going to be looking at x, right? So we're working descending order once again. So we're heading from the highest power to the lowest power. So we can see us straight away the highest power of, here of x is 5. So we'll start with negative 3x to the power of 5. Then we're going to look for, is there 4? Yes, there is. There's x to the power of 4 over there. So we have negative x to the power of 4y. Is there x to the power of 3 anyway? Here we go. Yes, x to the power of 3. So we can say plus 8x to the power of 3, y to the power of 2. Is there any x to the power of 2? Yes, there is over here. So that is plus 2x squared, y to the power of 3. So, um, just in the way that I'm looking for the next one, I'm looking for the next lowest one. 
It doesn't necessarily mean that it counts down perfectly 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Sometimes they can skip a power and there's no problem with that. Say if there wasn't a power of 2, I'll just look for one that's just x to the power of 1, okay? So it's not specific like that, so don't think you are wrong if you can't find the next value. Now we're looking for something lower. We have here x to the power of 1, right? So we can say plus 5x, that's power to the power of 1, y4. And once we've done that, we can just look for the term that does not have an x, in this case is y to the power of 5 over here. Okay. So just to confirm, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. Okay. Moving on, in, arrange the expression in descending order of y. So now we're going to do the exact same thing, but we'll be looking at the y power. Okay. So if we're starting off with the highest power of y, if we look across the line here, we can see that will be to the power of 5, right? So we have y to the power of 5 first. So let's look for, here we go, we have a y to the power of 4. We immediately know that that would be next. So we have 5x y to the power of 4. It's plus, right? Let's look for the next one. We can see we have a 3, so obviously that would go next. So we have 2x squared y to the power of 3. So you can see we're heading down in powers of y here. So y is going 5, 4, 3. Um, can't put the plus there yet. Let's see what our next one is. Um, we have y to the power of 2 over here. So we can go plus 8x cubed y to the power of 2. And then we'll find our, here we go, we have y to the power of 1. So we have negative x to the power of 4, y to the power of 1. And then last but not least we have here a term that does not have a y in it. So that's basically y to the power of 0. So we know we can include that as our last one. Okay. And just like that we finished off. Let's just make sure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that was how we do this whole example over here. So I hope that these examples have helped you to understand how we could answer certain things like degrees of the expression, coefficients of certain terms, how to try and figure out when they're trying to catch us out by saying the coefficient or the term with the highest coefficient. And yeah, I hope this lesson really did help you and hope to see you on the next video.